So as Ashley just told us, the stock's more or less unchanged for the year. I want to get an expert's view on the markets, the economy. With me now, former congressman, former director of the Office of Management and Budget under President Ronald Reagan, and a private equity investor, David Stockman, I should say, a reformed one, yeah, David, sure. but glad to have, borrow your experience yeah. all the same. So when you see the U.S. economy, you just heard my colleague Ashley Webster talking about just these, right. this rocky market pattern. What is your take? I think we're entering payback time. We have had one hellacious party here. 90 straight months of zero interest rates. There's nothing like it previously conceived. We have had three and a half trillion of money. Per uh, no one even remotely All right, so imagined. So which Fed chair is the most to blame between Greenspan, Bernanke? Well, I think Greenspan started it. Uh, Bernanke uh, added to it. And Yellen uh, follows uh, along. But, you know, we cannot create prosperity with zero interest rates in an economy that's already at peak debt. In other words, households have $13 trillion of debt. They can't borrow and anymore. And savers are being and punished. And savers are being... Under Ronald Reagan, I mean, right. people could put money away and actually get paid right. for lending their money to a bank in a savings account. Now, I think 0.5% is a go. Well, it actually means that if you were working in 1980 and you retired last year and you accumulated $250,000, which is a lot, you're earning one cappuccino per day at Starbucks on all the savings of a lifetime. Now, that is fundamentally wrong, and it indicates that the Fed is way off track. It's lost. It's painted itself into a corner. And I think we're at the end of this so-called recovery. It's 84 months long. That's far longer than the normal recovery. So what's going to happen? We're going to head into recession later this year or next year. The world economy is slowing down rapidly. We can see it in the trade numbers. We can see it in the constant... Uh, 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 dislocation that's going on in China. So uh, when the recession hits, the market is going to be utterly unprepared. They're going to realize that all of this uh, What's monetary... What's the match, David? When you say the recession, what do you, is it corporate credit? I mean, there's a lot of people looking yes. for first signs. Where do you see the cracks right now? Well, I see three of them, but one of them is the buildup of inventories. Business sales have been declining ever since the summer of 2014. They're down 5% five, 5 from the peak. Inventories continue to build. We're now at an inventory to sales ratio through, throughout the whole Which economy. Which many businesses or many business people, I think, just shows a lack of confidence, right? If you don't know where right. your business is going, you're not going to buy anything. You're not going to buy machinery. You're not going to buy equipment if you're not sure about the No, future. I agree with that. And capital spending has petered out entirely. In fact, orders have been negative for many months. If you look at uh, the freight indices, for instance, rail transportation is down double digits. Truck transportation is down 5 or 6%. Goods aren't moving through the economy. Inventory is building up involuntarily. That is always a sign that recession is around the corner. Uh, employment or jobs are a lagging indicator, and the numbers that the BLS produces <laughs> are pretty dubious anyway. And we still know that there's a lot of people who are looking for jobs who have quite simply just given up looking oh. for a job. The labor force participation rate, you know, when the department calls and says, are you looking for a job, and people say no, it might mean that they've just given up. So you're concerned about the U.S., clearly concerned about China. I want to bring in Donald Trump's comments on China and a potential trade war. Here it is. Sure. Trade war? We're losing $500 billion in trade with China. Who the hell cares if there's a trade war? Trade war? It's crazy. All right, so that was at an event <laughs> last night. Right. Um, if you're concerned about the U.S., China is also slowing. So, and if Europe is on the ropes, where does the world find growth? Where does an investor look for growth? I think the investor shouldn't be looking for growth. The investor should be looking for cover. Because the fact is, uh, we've had a 20-year growth boom, credit boom. That's over. There is so much debt in the world today that no one can really grow. Japan is, you know, uh, buried in debt. debt. China has $30 trillion and they basically have borrowed their way to this massive uh, uh, construction bubble that's coming to an end. Uh, Europe is, you know, sort of a socialist old age colony that uh, can't cope with its debt. We can see that, uh, you know, uh, throughout Europe. 
So uh, I think the idea that you're going to find growth somewhere in the world is wrong. What we're entering now is, I said before, the payback era, where all of the false prosperity that came from this massive borrowing is, is going to be... All right, uh, so buy from, gold coins and <laughs> stitch them in your mattress if you're listening to David right now. But I want to ask you about, we are in a political season, we're in a campaign season, between Donald Trump and then on the Democratic side, there are legitimately still two candidates, even right. though um, mathematicians favor Hillary Clinton getting the nomination. Which one makes the most sense to you, if any, for the economy? Well, look, um, I don't agree with half of what Donald Trump says and most of his demagoguery. But we've had 20 years of Clinton, Bush, mainstream, Wall Street, Washington uh, policy. It's failed in our foreign policy. It's failed domestically. We got 19 trillion of debt. We have a Fed out of control. We have a boom on Wall Street that's on its last legs. We have Main Street barely uh, uh, better off than it was eight years ago. In fact, uh, half yeah. of Main Street is worse off. So I would say we need a disruptor. And there's okay. only one guy in the race say, who qualifies, who yeah, who that qualifies for that uh, David, that title. thank you for being here. The intersection of politics, of business, of economics, yeah. we're grateful. Thank you very much, David Stockman, with me there. We'll